Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Hope that um, everybody's been doing well. Karen, what's up? Bad Brad, what's going on? Waldo, glad to hear you're going on today. Thank you, Waldo. Jose Lopez, hi Bagware, Jennifer Woods, hi, hi, hi Bad. Uh, Dave, working on stuff right now. What's up? What's hey? I haven't forgot about you, Dave. I'll uh, reach out to you here later today. Just catching up on stuff. Uh, let's see. How's the wife? We'll we'll touch on that here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. What's up, Jose Lopez, Cartel Print, Stephen Thomas? How you doing? What's up, Matt? Okay. Let's uh let's dive into this, shall we? Let's uh, let's get this let's get this party started. I I can't really hear the uh <laughs> background music. But it's good to to see y'all again. Man, I'm I'm just kind of getting back into things. I don't even know which of these to the click. There we go. There we go. I hope everybody has been doing well. Hope you guys have been keeping busy this summer. Uh, I'm just going to do a few more shout outs and then we'll kind of get into the tutorial. And in the meantime, I, I left a link down in the description if you would like to, to kind of follow along. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the, the plans moving forward. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are concerned uh, about Shannon and we'll we'll touch on that here in a little bit but we'll also talk about uh, some of the plans moving forward uh, with everything going on with their health and whatnot uh, you know as far as what what I'm doing uh, with the business so we'll we'll touch on that uh, is SEP studio for any good it's fine it works just fine um, we've used it. It just, you know, it's not a separation software where you can just open it up and here's your colors and it's good to go. It takes some messing around with, and sometimes it, you know, it takes doing a handful of jobs to kind of really figure out what it's doing. And, uh, we, we have some tutorials on using separation studio four. So go and check that out how I kind of, uh, really get some decent results out of it. It's not the best thing, although it, it we sometimes do go to it to, to make things fast if we're just trying to get something in and out pretty quick. Uh, my brother Matt, you're, you're looking good. Thank you. I appreciate it there, Tommy. Uh, when are you going to drop your plug-in for SEPs? Um, I, I still have that in the works, and we'll, we'll talk about that towards the the end of this little tutorial. I know you guys probably have a lot of questions, but <clears throat> I'm just trying to get back into, uh, just trying to get back into things. And uh, so moving forward, it'll, it'll probably be stuff like this and also just live chatting with you guys. So again, if you want to join in, download the, download the file, pop open Illustrator if you'd like to, otherwise, uh, I'm going to show you how I go about separating some artwork for uh, doing screens. If if you're if you happen to find this video later down the road and you're just trying to learn how to separate things, either for a job that you got coming in, or if you're interested in getting into screen printing, uh, this is it's somewhat basic. It's not super complicated, but there are some things you need to keep in mind. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to make an underbase, how to choke an underbase, how to spread your top colors. We'll kind of go over all that stuff. And uh, so let's go ahead and dive into uh, Adobe Illustrator here. Let me give you guys the desktop view, if I can remember which one of these it is. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let me... All right, so here is the graphic that we are working with. It's obviously going to go on a red t-shirt, just kind of like you see in the thumbnail there. And this is this is all vector art. 
and you'll see that we do have some sort of just kind of uh, distressing added to it. This is not a graphic I did that I created. I, I downloaded it because I thought it was cool and it has a couple features in it that I, I figured you guys could uh, maybe learn a little something from it. In, in other words, we got, we got a black and then we obviously have some colors in there that are going to need a white base being that this is a a red t-shirt it's going to need a white base in order for some of these colors to to work out so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to get rid of this distressing but i'm going to include it into the design and i'll show you how we'll we'll go about doing that uh, so i'm just going to select everything here so i just clicked and dragged my mouse and we're gonna go over to, so I'm gonna go to Windows and then Pathfinder. And that will bring up this little window here. And it allows you to divide things, uh, kind of combine them together. And I'll show you how I kind of use this to do separations. And if for some reason this is a little small for you guys to see, uh, I'll try to figure out in the future how I can Kind of scale this stuff up uh, generally when i'm editing things i'm able to blow things up but for now we're going to go over to this little tool right here where it says divide i'm going to hit divide now we're just going to the go in here and we're going to i'm going to hit a on the keyboard or it's this little direct selection tool you can click that as well and we're going to select this red and then we'll go up to select same and fill color and that's going to select all of that all that dark red that's kind of acting as some sort of a distressor and i'm just going to delete that and you can see that it, it did um, essentially knock that out of our graphic that we're going to screen print as well uh, while we're at it we'll just get rid of this red here but I'll make a, a new swatch just so we can put that back on, on the uh, behind the graphics so we can have some sort of visual visualization here. So I'm just going to add a new swatch real quick. I'm over here in the swatches palette and hit the plus. And I'm just going to delete that all together. Actually, let me go back to select, same, and fill color. And it looked like... It didn't quite grab everything, but that's okay. We'll select that, same. Go color again. Looks like it grabbed everything else. And now we got all of that red gone. I'm gonna go over to my layers. I'm just gonna layer this art for now because we know this is the artwork that we're working with. We'll make ourselves a new layer and we'll just call it t-shirt color. And we'll we'll just put a Let's drag this underneath the, the art layer and then we'll just take a our little box tool here and we'll just drag that color out. So we got our background with all that without all that goofy distressing in there. Um, it's still again, it still does have a little bit of that distressing. It wasn't like just it wasn't distressed to the point towards where it was like, you know, hard to see what the image is. Just got a little bit in there just to give a little bit of a. Uh, gives it jazzes it up a little bit all right so one of the the first things i do when i am looking at a piece of art like this i'm i'm considering our white base and then our, our black um i i tend to like to, to go in order with how things will print on press so obviously the the first thing we would do is we would create a white base so everything here aside from the black i don't like to put a white base under my black uh, i just like to print black straight down onto the t-shirt so what we're going to do is we're just going to let's take the black first and i'll show you why i'm kind of going this route uh, actually let's do this 
let's do this because this one is uh, it's not super difficult but you do kind of have to really think about how you're you're going about uh separating this and what i mean by that is um our we're gonna have to knock that black out of the, the white base so generally when i'm doing something like this all right let but <laughs> i feel like i'm a little all over the place but uh, sometimes this is just kind of part of the process what i'm going to do is at at this moment all these because we divided everything everything you see here are they're just separate pieces so i want to make those one piece so i'm just going to select this blue right here that makes up the wing and the color of this rim and the highlights of the the font here and then i'm going to go to select same and fill color and i'll come back and answer y'all's questions but i'm going to hit command x which will just cut that and then i'm going to hit command f to paste that in front and you might be asking why why would you do that and i'll show you here in a moment because sometimes when you divide these pieces of art and you're trying to essentially flatten it towards where it's not layered up you will end up with just little bits in there that will just It'll just be an, an issue down the road. Now that we selected all of that color, we're just going to come up here to our Pathfinder once again, and we're going to click on the Unite button. And what that will do is it will just make it one shape so you're not having to, you're not, you won't have to constantly go back and, and select all this stuff. You've made it one shape and it's just gonna all stay together, almost like a group, but it's not a group. We don't want it grouped right now because uh, we want to be able to edit this. And I'll show you here in a moment. Sorry, my, my camera tends to click on and off. I have no idea why. All right, so we got this blue. We're just going to come over here and we're going to make a, a new swatch. And as we go along, I'm going to show you how to define the PMS colors for these as well. Uh, just in case you don't want to use like stock off the shelf stuff where you're trying to find the closest color possible because I mean in reality it looks like we have kind of a a cream white we've got an orange and we've got a uh, we got black and then we have like a Columbia blue so let's set it up towards where it's off the shelf colors for now and then I'll show you how to actually pull out custom PMS colors so let's call this Columbia blue and down here in color type, we'll select spot color. We'll hit OK. And you'll know the difference between a spot color and uh, just a, a custom color that you have made is by this little dot here in the corner. If it's hard for you to see on screen, if you're kind of following along, you'll see the little dot there in the swatch. So now let's go to our orange. And I'm going to hit A on the keyboard, or you can come over here and select the white arrow. I'm going to select that orange, select same, and fill color. Again, I'm going to cut that, and then I'm just going to paste it in front, and then make that one shape, so that way everything is just kind of grouped together. And as I'm doing this, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to separate art in Adobe Illustrator for screen printing. There's multiple ways to do this, but this is just how I tend to do it. And you'll kind of see why as we move further along, uh, why this kind of works for me. All right, and now we have this somewhat of a dark gray. We'll select it, do the same process. We'll cut it. We'll hit Command F or Control F if you're on a PC. And we'll go to Union, and we'll make a new swatch. We'll call this dark gray. I think we did forget to make the uh, orange spot color. Let's go ahead and do that before I forget about it. So we'll click new swatch, and we'll just call it orange. And then we'll designate it as a spot color. Hit OK. And it looks like, let's go ahead and grab this black. We'll hit select, 
same fill color. We'll cut that once again. Command F to paste in front. We'll make it one shape. And then we'll make a new spot color. We'll just call it black. Make it a spot color from your color type drop down here. We'll hit OK. Uh, excuse me, it's not going to allow me to do that. We'll call it black spot. Um, generally when you're making, and sometimes I have a brain fart when I do this, uh, but when you're making a spot color, you can't make it anything like cyan, magenta, yellow, or black. Otherwise it'll say you can't do that because it's a color that the system's using. So we'll call it black spot for now. We'll hit OK. And let's see if we're missing anything. And then we've got this somewhat of a, a cream color. Even though it looks like there's two separate colors here, but let's say for the sake of our client wanting to just make those one color to save them a little bit of cost on having to, to print an extra color between screens and all that. Uh, we'll just select this here, select same and fill color. Again, we'll cut it, we'll paste it to the front. We'll make a new swatch, we'll just call this cream. And we'll choose spot color, hit OK. Uh, let's unite it. And then the same thing with this color down here. We'll select it. Go to select, same, fill color. We'll cut it. Hit Command F to paste it in front. We'll unite it. And then we already have our, our color, so we'll just make it the same color uh, by clicking on this swatch here as the rest of it. And we can actually take these two pieces here and we'll just unite that as well. So it's just all one big piece. Now, if we go over to window and you go to separations preview, you can click on this little button here that says overprint preview. And we'll turn off CMYK. Let's go ahead and make this a uh, spot color, our t-shirt color. That way, whoops. Try that again. We'll call it t-shirt color. Just so it's showing up and it's not part of that CMYK process. And it keeps wanting to turn this thing to uh, that red color. All right, let's go back to turnover print preview off. Unlock our t-shirt color. We'll sign it that spot color, just so it doesn't disappear when we turn uh, CMYK off. All right, so CMYK is off. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is, you can see as I click each one of these, each one of these off, we have each one of these colors just kind of disappearing. Let's see, we got our black spot which is not going to let me turn that off because there's nothing else for it to show. But that's a good way to just kind of show you what spot colors are in there. And I'll show you how this is, is handy here in a second. Um, but what we're going to do at this moment is we're going to select all of our colors that we just have made, our, our black, our cream, our orange. We'll grab our blue if we haven't already. Let's make sure we got everything. Looks like we got everything except for this gray. We'll just select that as well. And I'm just holding shift and clicking on each one of these. And we'll cut it. Now all of our uh, graphics are gone. But if I press Command Y. All right. Looks like we're golden. Sometimes there are little bits and pieces that like to just hang out in the background here. Uh, looks like we're okay in this particular instance. Now at, at this point, we're going to want to create a, a white base. Let's go back over to our separations window. I'll just drag this up here so it's a little easier to see. We'll hit over print preview and we'll turn all of our colors off that we want to create a white base for. Uh, we can leave our t-shirt color there and we'll turn the orange off. Or excuse me, um, we want to turn our black off. <laughs> we'll turn our black off and our CMYK off. And uh, we probably don't need a, a base for this dark gray. 
I'm going to say that doesn't really need a base. Um, so everything we want to make a base for, with the exception of this t-shirt color here, I'll just turn that off. So here's everything we want to make a, a white base for. So I'm just going to select everything here. Get rid of that. We don't need that. All right. So we're going to select our blue. We're going to select our orange. And we're going to select this cream color. And I'm just going to hit copy on the keyboard. And we can turn over print preview back on. I'm going to go up here to my layers. I'm going to make a new layer and we'll just call this white base. And we'll drag that underneath our art. We'll turn our art off and then we'll hit command F or paste in front. And it will put it in the exact same spot that your art is in. So that way things aren't getting out of registration. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our color and we're going to make ourselves a, uh, a custom color here. Uh, let's just go ahead and select white for now. But what I like to do uh, anytime that uh, we're, I'm setting up a, a white base is I do like to add like just a touch of cyan in it just so it makes it easier to see. So we're going to go back over to swatches. I'm going to hit new swatch and we'll call this white base. We'll make sure it is a spot color and we'll hit OK. So there is our white base. Now how I go about kind of figuring out whether or not I'm going to choke a white base or not generally has to do with uh, how bold the base is. And, and in this case, we have a lot of pretty just kind of uh, detailed lines where the graphics aren't very bold. So if I were to choke this back any, it would essentially make that smaller and your, your graphic would just not really look like a good representation. I'd much rather the base be exactly how the graphics are and spread the top color past that white base because without that white base underneath that top color you're hardly going to be able to see it you'll faintly see it but what's really going to stand out is what has the the white base underneath it but if you wanted to know how to go ahead and choke this this is how i generally go about uh, choking my white base but let me go back and we'll take all this and we'll just go ahead and go back up to our Pathfinder and we'll hit Unite. That way this is all one piece again. Or in this instance for the first time because we've just created this white base. But as I was saying, I, I made this, the white base, a slight blue. That way we can see it on top of white. But also for the sake of how I like to do, uh, how I like to choke my white base. And really how that is, how we're going to do that is we're just going to, um, we'll just call this white. Generally when you're pulling in artwork, you're going to have all your swatches, but because this is some artwork that uh, I found for free online to do this demonstration, it doesn't have any of the, uh, your standard colors that it would input in there. Um, so we'll we'll just do a white, and it's not a spot color. We'll make it process. Now, when I go to put, uh, in order to choke this, what I'll do is I'll put a, a stroke on it. And generally, it could be anywhere from uh, one point, the, the half a point. There's different ways that you could go about it, but there's also, uh, just depending on the graphic, you might want to either set it up towards where uh, rather than the stroke being centered it's on the inside um, in, in that case I might just do a 0.5 stroke and then when you're going to print out and you can see just because putting on that 0.5 stroke um, everything here practically just 
would not be printing. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If I hit no stroke, now it goes back to that blue. So none of this stuff up here would be all that bright if we were choking back our white base. Uh, but let's get rid of that, that stroke. And we'll start adding a spread to some of these top colors. Now I'm going to turn on my art layer here. And let's go ahead and make another layer. We'll call it black. And we'll make another one for the color. Now I'm going to go over to my art. I'm going to grab my colors. Let's just go ahead and grab this blue. We'll grab this cream color, the gray, and the orange. And that looks like all the colors that we really need. I'm going to click on my color layer and hit Command F. So if I turn my art layer off, you'll see that we have all of our colors sitting on that particular layer. We'll just turn that off real quick. I will turn our art layer back on, and which it looks like, uh, let's go back up to our art and put that, those colors back there. Um, at this point, we're going to grab the black. Uh, we'll just hit copy. Last time I accidentally hit the cut, but uh, no big deal. We were able to put that back on the art layer. Let's go over to our black and we'll hit Command F and we'll just paste that on there. So now we have our black spot color here. And we'll drag our black layer above our, our color layer. Now what the, the black is going to uh, somewhat do is trap the, the spread on some of the colors that you put on it. Uh, in order to, to help with registration, as a lot of you guys may know, when you go to print your, your white base down, if you don't put a little bit of a spread, unless your press is just has zero issues with um, a little bit of white peeking out with screen printing when you're flashing shirts, you know, they can shrink just a hair from the heat. Uh, your, your screens can wiggle a little bit. Your palettes can move just depending on the condition of your press and what kind of press it is. Uh, if your press is dialed in, then uh, even still, you generally want a little bit of uh, a spread or bleed, as some people call it. Uh, generally, I associate a bleed with um, paper print towards where they're going to trim it down, and that's a, it's bleeding off the edge. But in this case, uh, I would call this a spread. So let's go ahead and lock our black layer and then we'll, we'll turn it off. We'll turn on our white base and then we'll turn on our color. I'm going to go ahead and lock my white base so there's no issues with um, that moving. So now I'm going to just go color by color and I'm going to put a 0.1 outline on this but of the same color so this is our cream color we're going to go back to our swatch that we made and we'll put a a, uh, a stroke on that and in my opinion it's probably filling this in just a little too much i don't want to lose some of these details so what we're going to do rather than the point one we'll just do half a point so that way we can still retain some of these details here but again when you you're printing on top of the shirt without a white base some of these details will come back you're not going to completely lose them but in order to give it more of a fighting chance i'm just going to do uh, half a point there on that and then we'll do the same thing to this blue we'll put a, a blue stroke on it make sure it's just half a point now if i were doing a graphic where it was just like something really bold didn't have a lot of fine details. I'd probably set it at one, but in this case, I'm going to do half a point. Now we're going to grab our orange, put a stroke on it. We'll make that half a point. This, uh, this gray here, I'm going to leave it as is because uh, that gray and black 
we'll just kind of print, we would print those uh, as a butt registration. And generally with, uh, when you don't have a white base or anything like that, your colors are going to spread just a little bit. They never just go straight down into the shirt. There's always a little bit of what you would call gain as your, your area that you're printing just gets a little bit bigger. So we'll just leave that as is because it's a pretty dark color. Um, let's see, did we do our orange? Yep, we did our orange, we did our uh, cream color, and we did our blue. So now we, we effectively put a spread on those. Now I'm gonna select those three colors. Uh, even our, our, um, our dark gray, I'm gonna select it as well this time around. So we have all of our colors selected. You can see our white base under there. We'll turn that off for now. And I'm gonna go up to window and attributes. I already have the palette open, but that's essentially where I'm pulling this from. And we're gonna click on overprint fill and overprint stroke. So both of those have a check mark next to it. Now we can turn on our white base. And this is where the, um, the separation preview will come in handy because when you click on uh, overprint preview, we'll turn on our dark gray and we'll leave, eh, let's try it with our, our t-shirt color. Um, all right, yeah, we'll turn our t-shirt color on. And again, because I, I made the, the white base a slightly different color. It is gonna give us uh, just kind of a different tint, but we'll make this white for now, just so you guys can kind of see the difference. Now, everything you see here going towards the outside is the spread of that stroke that we put onto our graphic there. So if I were to turn off this blue, you can see our white base here. If I turn that blue back on, this is how much further that color is going to be printed past our, our white base. And that will just help with our registration while we're on press. So we don't have any white peeking out. And, uh, you know, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room from station to station. So that way uh, your prints come out looking awesome and there's no white peeking out aside from perhaps maybe a user error where you don't have enough tack down and that shirt starts to wiggle a little bit. All right, so we've got our spread put onto our, our overprint colors. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we'll, we'll turn off the overprint preview and let's turn on our black. I don't think we need to really do anything with our black. Again, there's no underbase underneath this black. But uh, that black, what it will do, and we're going to need to select it. So let's unlock that black, we'll lock our color, and we'll select the black. And with this, we will select overprint fill. So that way, what you can do is you can effectively, I'll show you here, we'll turn our black off and our color off. Uh, let's go to overprint preview here for a second. So generally with screen printing, you're gonna, going to want to do your white base, uh, some of your, your lighter colors. You kind of want to do a mix between lightest and smallest image. I would print all of this wet on wet. It'd come out fantastic. I'd probably do the white base with the 195. I would do uh, the rest of the colors with the 230. And I might do the black with a 230 and just hit it twice and uh, the print all the the overprint colors with just one hit as you start to as you're printing these these things wet on wet those colors will build up on the back of the the screen it'll take you a couple of uh, test prints but um, it will fill that in and uh, by hitting the black twice it'll fill the knit of the shirt the white base I'd probably hit it twice but I'll show you how this would kind of print on press uh, and we would do the white first we'd flash it and then we would do uh, let's say the dark gray let me turn the uh, colors on here 
and turn them off so we can kind of simulate how this would be printed. And it, it kind of, I mean, it's not as, it doesn't make that big of a difference if you go from uh, dark to light. I mean, there's times when I do the, the black right after the white. But in this case, I would do, uh, let's say one of our, our smallest colors is the dark gray. There's hardly anything there. And then we would do the, the cream color. And then I would say the orange. And then our, our Columbia blue. And then last but not least, we would do our black. And then that's essentially how you would get your... Uh, how I would set it up on press. Uh, by the way, if, if you're new to the channel or if you don't have Illustrator just yet, uh, be sure to, to check out our link down in the description. If you use our link to get a, uh, a subscription, uh, you'll get a little bit of a, a discount. Plus also it will kick a, a commission our way for teaching you awesome stuff like this. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys one last thing and then I'll, I'll go over to uh, the questions. Uh, I'll show you uh, two more things, really. Um, so let's say, for instance, you wanted these colors to, instead of using off-the-shelf colors, you wanted to, to go ahead and use uh, some, and figure out what PMS colors there are. So I would go about doing that is I would just select everything here, uh, with the exception of our white base. Uh, let's say this black, I mean this, Technically, it's black, but it, it really is a dark gray. But I'll, I'll show you how to, the, to pick that out. So I'm going to select everything here on the artboard. And then I'm going to go over to my swatches palette. I'm going to click on this folder where it says New Color Group. And you just want to make sure all these things here are selected. Uh, we'll just call it, um, we'll call it Spot Colors for the heck of it. Or PMS colors. Yeah, let's call it PMS colors. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now, once you do that, you'll see this little color wheel that comes up. It says Edit or Apply Color Group. And we'll go ahead and click that. And what we'll do is we'll go down. Hopefully you guys can, can see this. Um, but there's this little box down here. It says none. It kind of looks like a, a grid. And what we'll do is we'll go to, let's see where are we at. A color books, and then we'll go to Pantone solid coated. You can use coated or uncoated if you're trying to hit a certain PMS colors, a certain PMS color. Uh, I don't have a Pantone book here in front of me. However, uh, generally with screen printing, I personally like to lean on the, the uncoated book. So we'll use uncoated and we'll hit okay. And we'll come over here and we'll select all unused colors. We'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. Now it gave us these kind of random generated PMS colors. It, it essentially looked for the closest PMS color to whatever the, the mix was there. Um, and so at this case, it, it would give you all of your, your PMS colors here. Uh, so we'll just scroll over the top of these. You can see we got Pantone Neutral Black U, Pantone 454U. We got a Pantone Black 6U, Pantone 124U. So it, uh, it tossed in, in this case, it tossed in a, a couple options, um, but we can kind of compare that to a, a Pantone book and figure out, uh, look at those colors and see if they're, if you would be happy with those colors. If not, you can kind of go through and pick and choose the colors that you want. And let's say for instance, you want to put your own color in there, you would go to window and then you can go to swatch libraries uh, color books, and then Pantone uh, solid uncoated. And all you would have to do is punch that number in there. Let's say we wanted 186 for whatever reason. There we go. There's our, our 186. 
Okay, and last but not least, uh, generally I would take this artwork, we'll unlock our, our white base. I would take this artwork and I would copy it. And I have a registration template uh, that I've created. Oh, I have a link down in the description if you're interested in checking that out. It does help support the channel, but we'll go over to our templates and I'll just show you real quick how I would go about printing this. Uh, so we're gonna open up our t-shirt registration template and then we'll just paste that graphic in there. You can scale it to whatever size you want. Maybe your client wants it about nine inches wide. And then we've got our registration and our, our center marks here. I always like to have those center marks on there so I can make sure my white base is nice and centered. And then our outside registration graphics just to uh, really be able to find dial in our, our registration. And I'm gonna hit Command P to go to print. And we would just select our, our printer because this computer here is not uh, hooked up to any printer in particular uh, because I am in a different in a, a different space now uh, I'm no longer near the the film printers but anytime we do that I'm in the other room and um, so under output I want you to have your your printer selected because I don't have any uh, printer hooked up we'll just use Adobe Postscript go to separations and then you would set uh, your film to whatever size you need it to be. Uh, in this case, we'll just call it custom. And it should be on a 13 by 19 film. It did not like that, did it? All right, so it's only let me do eight and a half by 14. Again, it's only because that printer's drivers aren't installed on this. And then under output, you have uh, your spot colors that you're working with. Your, all of your Pantone colors and your white base and you would hit print and then it would go to your printer and you have your separation. So that is how I go about uh, separating artwork and Adobe Illustrator for screen printing. So I'm gonna go back over to the chat, see what you guys are up to and we'll, we'll, talk, about, uh, we'll talk about some stuff see what kind of questions y'all have. And uh, I'm sure you guys are curious about uh, how Shannon's doing. And I kind of want to talk about where, uh, where I'm kind of going to go moving forward with uh, the business and everything. Uh, so if you have a question, do at Mikey Designs in the chat now. Uh, if, if you do have any questions, let me know. Uh, aside from that, I'll just give you an update. Uh, hey, what's up, Rye Beats? I'm just going to kind of go through and do uh, some more shout outs. A Sonu G. I hope I'm saying that right. Small Town Graphics. I think I've already said what's up to you. FNF Giza. Just say the word. What's up, Gina? Uh, Scooby Doo, how are you doing? Uh, hope you are doing well. Okay. All right. So Shannon, she is, uh, let me just go ahead and switch this over. Doesn't look like, okay, there we go. We got a, a chat popped up. Uh, what's up? How you doing? But Shannon is uh, X clones X, X clones S, X. Uh, Shannon's doing a, a little better. She's still uh, ill. She, you know, she's made some progress, which is really great because we, uh, you know, there for a while, she was kind of bedridden. She bedridden. Uh, she lost a, a lot of muscle mass, um, a lot of weight, uh, and she just from uh, the liver disease. She's still her complexion is still yellow, but uh, the doctor has said that um, I forget what the numbers were, but her numbers were really high, which was kind of making her look uh, jaundice, and so they're they've gone back down and they're getting closer to a point towards where her skin color will will kind of return to normal um she still does have pains from time to time but she has been uh, getting out and doing things more like yesterday we went to uh, galveston we took a, a trip there and we just hung out it was relaxing uh, she got in the ocean uh, 
Um, she's been kind of, uh, I wouldn't say kind of, she's been able to take care of herself a little more without as, as much help. But, you know, she, her, she's still a little, uh, a little weak, I'd say, but she's been, she's been able to, to get around and do whatever, whatever she wants, really draw all that stuff. Um, until, I mean, there are times when she's in a little bit of pain towards where, uh, it just doesn't, uh, she can't really do anything, but so still going through the process of the, the whole, uh, liver transplant we were talking and the you know the doctors are they're doing what they can to to get her liver back to a better place but i mean it looks like she you know she definitely still needs that that transplant because uh, eventually what will happen is uh because her her liver is in such bad state it will uh, the cells in her liver will start turning cancerous and so uh, they're just trying to hurry up and, you know, just move the process along of her, her getting a, a, a transplant. So we're, she's hanging in there. Uh, we're hanging in here as far as the business goes. It wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for you guys uh, showing your support. I mean, it, it's still at this point, um, you know, things have changed a lot and, um, I haven't been able to be here as much as I would like to so far it's thus far, uh, it's been Michelle and myself and, uh, let me go towards where you can actually see my mug here, but it's, it's been Michelle and myself here for the most part. I've had to train her how to do, uh, answer. Well, she already knew how to answer her phones, but and have heard some of the questions, but just essentially training her to, to uh, be able to guide someone in uh, getting a quote and all that, and just helping pick up some of that responsibility. And she's been, I've trained her on Printavo. Uh, it really didn't take too long. She's picking that up, it sends out quotes and all that, and helps kind of check the email. But we, we still are having gone from there being four of us to just the two um you know there at this point it's we're kind of really not that we're just taking in what we want uh, we're taking in what we can what we possibly can and i'm working on uh, hopefully here in in soon we can bring in uh, another either someone to help with uh, screens and all that. Like Panda has been coming in to help out with screens. He comes in a, a couple times a week, but you know, his heart really doesn't lie in what's going on here. He just enjoys being around us and helping and getting paid to help. So I, I definitely need a, a printer in here, but the flip side of that whole thing is, you know, because I'm not, able to be in the office as much as I would like. It, it makes training difficult. So we're just kind of hanging in there and, and hopefully uh, we'll get someone in here and get things back to where it was and, and we'll exceed. And I kind of, I just want to be able to get this place to a point towards where um, there's four or five of us. We have a, a screen printer. We have someone uh, that's their helper helping with with screens and then uh, Michelle doing the artwork helping out with uh, just consulting with clients and and possibly uh, I'm not sure Shannon will ever be back so I'll, I'm sure in the future I'll have to consider uh, someone that can answer phones uh, and emails so that way it's not so much on Michelle's plate because she still is doing quite a bit of the artwork and separations and all that stuff. So at the moment, Michelle and I, we've been tag teaming everything from production to artwork, to phone calls, to what's up JB design and all that. I, so it's going to be, I almost feel like with the move and everything that went on, 
uh, it it was somewhat it wasn't somewhat it, it it was a setback big time and um i mean i still hadn't fully got this place set up it wasn't even but maybe a week and a half ago i finally painted my office uh <laughs> moved i moved the uh, embroidery machine in here because it just makes it easier uh for the time being for me to actually uh, run off embroidery jobs while i'm over here doing emails or separating some art and stuff like that i still need to put the wall up in the shop and all this stuff so it's going to be going to be a slow process i I do feel like uh you know had had i known all this stuff was going to go on i i probably wouldn't have moved the shop and just kind of kept things the way they were and just kind of uh kept jamming along with with our setup but the the whole goal of mine here was to grow the business so i still look forward to that some of the other things i'm going to do is uh finally release uh action steps i'm working on that again time has been limited and then i have some other ideas kicking around uh, that will uh, just kind of help support the business as well i've i've thought about putting together uh and, and Kind of doing some more updated videos taking some older videos as well but putting uh, an effort in to really explain everything um that deals with starting out in screen printing uh, you know from equipment you need to get to how to separate things how to do your screens troubleshooting growing your business with things uh like building your website and, and all the things you can kind of do so I was really i'm really wanting to do like an, an all-inclusive course towards where you're not having to go around and search and uh look at all of these uh you know watch ads in order to find the information and you might not know whether you're actually going to get what you're looking for so uh, the plans are to put together a course where it's it's straight to the point it's kind of a a, a back-end type thing where you can kind of go through each of these videos and um, go step by step and just kind of click off these videos and learn how to do all this stuff and it, it will be for beginners intermediate and, and experts and it'll show you everything from um, Screen printing simple spot colors to stuff that's more advanced like a simulated process and then also some of the, the business end things to kind of really get you going vendors and all that i'm sure a lot of you guys already know what what vendors there are but uh, i imagine people that are just wanting to get into it it and it, it took me maybe a year to even realize that hey there's wholesale vendors so I was thinking about doing something like that towards where it's, uh, you know, will help. Uh, it, it'll be a passive income, but also I'll, I'll continue to the screen print and grow this um, because, you know, I'm not, um, again, with, with Shannon's uh, health. And then, you know, at, at some point I would like to retire. <laughs> it's not going to happen like anytime soon but uh you know just planning for stuff like that uh, so keep an eye out for that and for the time being we're just pushing on and i'm going to be back at it uh, i'm going to try and stick to the the monday lives again uh, perhaps we can have some of you guys on and we'll do interviews or or just have everybody come in in a, a group chat and we'll just talk about screen printing but also, I've got some videos in the works in which I'll upload those. Uh, some of them are actually from the old shop, so keep an eye out for those. And uh, let me go over to the, the chat one more time. I know you guys probably, let's see, after not uh, me not interacting with y'all a whole lot, I mean, this really was just kind of a, a course and everything. Uh, Zappa Shoes, how are you doing? thanks for thanks for tuning in well 
Y'all be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Again, check out our uh, links in the description. They do help support the channel. And as a, us as a small business, I think I'm gonna call it a day because it has been a long one and today has definitely been a Monday. Uh, and also let me know what you would like to see as far as lives go. Would you just like to, to hang out and chat? Do you want to see uh, informative stuff like this? You want a little bit of all of it? Uh, I'm, again, we still do have the uh, Facebook group. I'll go back, it's been a little while since I checked it, but I know there hasn't been a whole lot of people joining. But uh, if you're kind of tired of some of the other groups, and one something that has a, a little bit smaller of a feel, because <laughs> it is. <laughs> Go check that out. But for now, I'm going to get out of here, guys. We hope y'all have a, a blessed week. I hope y'all crush it, and we'll see you in the next one. Y'all have a good one.